by my prince. Ooh, shite, man. Damn, I'm here. Man, it's been a while since the last Let's Paint episode. I think it's been at least two years. It really has been a while, huh? Anyway, welcome to episode four of Let's Paint. So, after I did the Fiverr video, which is doing pretty good, by the way, it's reviving my channel a little bit. After I published that video, I announced that I'm taking real commissions. By real, I mean they aren't on Fiverr. I'm doing like longer, bigger pieces for a fair price, not for dirt cheap. And I'm using this opportunity to bring this series back where I will be showcasing the process behind making a bigger professional piece. I've got a client today who requested me to draw this concept art-ish uh, scene. This is actually the person that uh, bought the $100 commission in the Fiverr video. It's the same guy. Oh, wow. Okay, so let's take a look at the pure project I have going on. So he provided me with some sketches of his vision for the character. It's for another D&D game. So this dude will be wearing loose clothes, has a cool hat, has a cat-like nose, feline eyes, claws, fingerless gloves, pretty edgy stuff, and sandals, my favorite part. This is his idea for the composition. There's gonna be this giant bad boy in the background. Some references for the background. I wanna do like a creepy desert scene where it's like there's a lot that's going on in shadow. Imagine that the giant scorpion in the background is in the sunlight and the rest of it is uh, in the dark. So it's going to be a little bit spooky. I think that's the type of lighting I want to go for. I actually worked on my first idea already. <clears throat> this guy's in the foreground here. He's holding something, a little something in his hand, looking at it, inspecting it like a real inspector. Spectre, and then there is gonna be this dude in the background. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, right? But I want to make the composition a little bit more interesting than this. It's just a little bit too stationary, boring. I don't know what word to use, but yeah, it's not the most exciting way to display the scene. I also have a character design that I made. Felt like make doing it in my sketchbook. So check this guy out. What I came up for the character based on his description. My client, Chris, I should probably mention the name. I'm not sure how feline his nose looks. Pretty cool design. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get cracking on this shit now and check back with you soon. So I figured out what kind of uh, pose I want to go for and I'm gonna do a little reference to photo shoot. I have this stupid shirt on with no sleeves. We're about to save some time. Very bad, I'm gonna take a new one. Damn. Now that's crazy lighting. Okay, so I'm probably gonna scrap this composition also because it doesn't feel dynamic enough to me. Like I want this to feel more intense. The way I usually achieve that effect is by creating like a very wide shot, like a very wide angle shot where some things are extremely close to the camera, some things are very far away. So what I wanna do with this, I wanna place that little scorpion very close to the camera, like really close. Our eye starts moving up in the shot following this dude's arm as we look at his face we see this big old dude, bad dude in the background, really far away. He's gonna be like faded into the background almost, but it's not gonna be unnoticeable. It's gonna be very spooky. It's gonna create like a small, medium, large shape transition. I'm gonna do this very image, but with the wider like lens, basically. <laughs> Just gonna get cracking on this, and then I'll send the progress shot to Chris, see what he thinks. Yeah, that's it. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm still here as a voice in your head. If you're wearing headphones, that is. I tried making a 3D base for the background here, but ended up not using it. So it was a little bit of wasted time, but I still thought I'd include it because it shows the 
real process. Sometimes you do shit that doesn't get into the final product, and I also did a sketch of the character which I ended up deleting. But yeah, just wanted to let you guys know what that was. I'm alright, enjoyed the rest of the time lapse. It's not gonna be too long, I'm gonna be back soon, okay? Alright, so time out for a little bit, alright? I wanted to talk about the compositional technique that I'm going for here. At one point during the process, I decided that it's probably beneficial for me to place down like a perspective guide thing, a vanishing point right in the center of the piece. I noticed that there's this very prominent line visible in this picture. It goes from this focal point right here to this focal point right here, if we can call that the focal point, the claw is raised up and about to attack. So that's essentially what the focal point in this picture is, I guess, because there is no specific object that is most clearly in focus in this picture, is what I want to say. What is in focus is the storytelling element of uh, this dude being about to slice this guy's whole body up into pieces or something. It's a very interesting uh, composition scenario because there are eyes travel through the piece across this like shape that is formed by how things are placed in the picture. So here's his arm goes up to his face, boom, goes over here, boom, to the claw. And like, this is the main area of interest. It's pretty nice, actually very, I'm very happy with how this composition turned out. It was worth going the extra mile to get the specific perspective. If we look at the background now, we are seeing some interesting stuff. We're seeing that uh, it, it's a little bit unfinished, you know? I think it actually won't be completely finished because the client is not paying for a background. They are paying for these two characters. I'm going for something very simple, something very fast. You might think that, wow, it's still like a whole desert background, right? So how does that make any sense? It still takes some considerable amount of effort. And what I want to say is it's actually not like that because all I'm thinking about is like these abstract shapes because you see, it's just sand, right? It's just sand and rocks. So like you can't really go wrong with it. It's, it's like shape design. All I'm doing is drawing random lines like this. I'm just letting my hand flow. It doesn't take any effort. And it still looks like rocks because you can't draw a rock wrong. You can just play with the shapes as much as you want. But yeah, I think I'm gonna put like some trees or something up here, still some trees without leaves with just these dry ass branches. But yeah, these trees will be showing that perspective, how wide the perspective is pointing towards that upper vanishing point. Yep, 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 yep. It's time to send this off to the client to review. I hope he is as happy with it as I am. Cool, cool, epic.
Yo, 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 hey, hey. It's your boy. Shalagun the boy. <laughs> anyway, check this out. We're making progress on this. We're making solid progress. I'm actually quite happy with how the character is turning out so far. Man, I went f***ing crazy with uh, rendering the pants. Like, I lost my mind a little bit over those clothing folds. The perspective is so weird. We're seeing the pants a little bit from below. It took me a, a lot of time to figure that part specifically out. It's like the reference I shot was not of much help because the character is supposed to have baggy pants. I spent a lot of time on that one day and when I went to sleep that day, <laughs> I started seeing like these forms in my head. My brain just started doing it. it started giving me these visions of these clothing folds and how to draw them. Luckily, I keep a sketchbook next to my bed sometimes, or not the sketchbook, just a notebook where I write down my thoughts. So I tried to understand these forms. If you can see anything, it's like basically this right here is where the main juice is at. That's what I needed to figure out. So yeah, that's why there's so much detail here also. Anyway, added in some lighting, some occlusion. If you guys noticed, this is like an ambient occlusion layer. I'm thinking of going for like a moonlight. This doesn't represent the values in the final picture. It's just the base shading. I'm gonna add like flat colors under here now as the next thing. Just like that. That's some trash color. I actually talked to Chris about this. What kind of colors he wants. Yeah, he sent me a new reference. So for colors, he wanted something like this. I don't know who the original artist is. But yeah, these reddish colors with these accents and stuff that kind of thing and like a purple feather on the hat that i've got going on there god damn it that is awful i'm not sure if this looks like a desert or not the initial thought i get is like they're on the moon or some shit or like on mars or something <laughs> the scorpion is actually supposed to be rising from the sand so i added in these things like this falling stuff there's gonna be a lot more of it probably and it's gonna look a lot more like sand i also think of adding like small rocks and pieces of like whatever this ground is made of like clay strips or something like broken dried clay he also wanted me to add like a smirk on the character's face and the cigarette i mean yeah it's solid progress i'm actually really happy with how this is turning out so far composition worked out pretty much how i wanted to perhaps it's not as extreme as i was hoping to get all right montage time let's go What the f***? This is pretty cool. I think we are at uh, quite an interesting result right now. We have added in some base colors. At first I was quite unsure about the color choices I went with here. Like these reds and browns and yellows under a blue light. Which is supposed to be like a moonlight or something. Basically my idea was that it's like a small portion of moonlight. Small portion? Small area of moonlight. It's like stops over there and goes back into the shadow. I should probably also delete the light from this area over here. I think that would make this add a little bit of visual interest to this area because it's just empty right now. But yeah, I kind of have committed to these colors now because I actually made a second color scheme, which I did not include in the time lapse for the sake of the length of the video. But yeah, this is our other version that I did uh, just to give the client some options. But yeah, this looks a little bit bland and, and there is not really much going on. I don't think I've actually gotten to the rendering portion yet because it, this is all like base lights. It may look a little bit like it's rendered but it's not it's just one layer for the light and the other layer for the shadows the occlusion shadows so now what i'm gonna do is i'm probably gonna merge all of these light layers onto one layer so that i can easily start rendering make this actually look cool i think i want like some sort of extra light source in here also from the top and behind so that it creates like some kind of backlight over here yeah, i should also mention that chris also preferred the night version that's why why i'm going with it and he also wanted it to look a little bit more Spooky, so it's like, yeah, I understand because you can still see the whole scorpion even though it's dark So I should probably conceal a little bit of its body in like darkness Just like the tail the scorpion is so big that half of its body is outside of the reach of that moonlight ray Oh, another thing Chris wanted was the light on the tip of the cigarette lighting up his face a little bit because it is so dark and that's a very good point because I did not think about that. I'm still thinking of it as like a light scene but with dark colors. I should change my way of thinking. Once 
once I start rendering, I can start thinking of this as a dark scene, as an actual nighttime shot, you know? Because you're not actually supposed to see all these little details in the nighttime. So yeah, I'll see what I can do about that. Anyway, that's about it for now. That's all I wanted to talk about. I guess I'll just start rendering this now. See where this will go. All right, see you guys soon. Just finished working on this image. Holy moly! Holy moly! We did it, boys. We did it, girls. We did the Chella Gundlers. Chella Gang. With Chella. Chuggalos. Anyway, I finished this. We did it. The spooky vibes have been lifted up in this image a little bit. I added like a color correction filter as a finalizer. It looked like this before. These are the raw colors. And this is after I applied a loot to give it that movie feel or something. That cinematic color grading effect. Did my best at the falling sand from the scorpion's claws and the tail. Tried to make it look more like sand that is actually in the air falling down. I still think that it may be not thick enough or something. If the scorpion actually came out from under the sand, if it was like buried in sand before, but maybe he wasn't. Maybe he was just sleeping on the sand or something. I was having a little bit of trouble lighting the character's face for a little bit. Then I went to an art station. I remembered I follow an artist, one particular artist who does some very cool works. He does like lighting similar to what I have going on here. Naranbatar Gunbold. The forms are popping like crazy. The, the, he's got the, the sharp key light above the character. He's got exactly the same lighting scenario on the character's face that I have going on right here. Upper left lighting scenario where it leaves like little highlight on this part of the face. So I referenced that while trying to keep the cigarette light also in place. I think I actually never talked about the references I used. The thing I did with the scorpions was I found like this 3D model on Sketchfab of a scorpion so I took some screenshots of it. I was trying to match the perspective. That's a pro tip for real. If you ever struggle to find the reference of something specific from a specific angle then you can go on like Sketchfab or Turbo Squid or something and look for 3D models of said thing. Yeah that's something I recommend doing. Also shoot your own reference. I still have all of these pictures of me and we got a bunch of desert stuff 
which I didn't end up using clay or something, some kind of material that dries up in the sun and cracks. Didn't do a lot of detail in the background because th there was actually this one skull in the sand here previously, but I deleted it because the client wasn't actually paying for the background. I remember doing this mistake when I did the Let's Paint video with the butterfly picture with the steampunk butterfly. I made like a super fully rendered background where the client wasn't even paying for it. So I just ended up spending like two weeks or something on a background that I wasn't even compensated for. So it's like, it was stupid of me. So I'm not repeating that mistake again. Very limited detail in the background. Left most of it in the shadow. So that's a clever way of doing it. Just leave everything in shadow in the nighttime if you don't want to render the background. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a pretty linear evolution. Like not much changed in the composition. Like everything went as planned, I guess. It's a positive thing actually, but is it entertaining to watch? That That's the, the question. I hope it was entertaining to watch me create this. I hope you guys learned something. Maybe there was some uh, educational value in this. I sure hope there was. But yeah, it feels great to have this behind my back now because it's been like a bit more than two weeks since I started working on this. But yeah, I, I'm very satisfied with the result. Yeah, this is going in my portfolio. I got another portfolio portfolio piece very epic very nice all right so commissions i'm taking them but yeah i mean if there's no demand on these bigger illustrations then i'm i will probably shift to making like sketch commissions or like simpler drawings that are more affordable to my audience i suppose and just uh, currently trying out what works what doesn't that's what's happening trying to do bigger illustrations right now to aid my portfolio to potentially get to work in the industry or something freelance work but yeah i mean that's about it I think pretty straightforward video actually. I'm out of here. I'm out. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, commission me if you want to and I'll see you guys next time. Also buy the prints. That's another great way of supporting me. Anyway, see you guys next time.